I now give the floor to His Excellency Demeke Mekonen Hassan, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia. Kabur President. Mr. President, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Excellency Secretary General of the United Nations, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor to address this August Assembly representing Ethiopia. I would like to extend my heartfelt congratulations to Your Excellency on your election as the President of the 78th Session of the General Assembly. I assure you of my country's full support in the execution of your responsibilities. When the world is faced with a multitude of challenges, in such times, we must ask ourselves, do we have the necessary political will to choose the global partnership over geopolitical competition? Are we prepared to work together towards a promising age of shared prosperity? Are we also committed to working together to serve our planet and to meet the aspiration of over 8 billion people? The uncomfortable truth is that we are increasingly witnessing policy choices that escalate tensions, threatening the peace and stability of the world. Poverty and hunger are rising. The progress towards achieving the sustainable development goals of track, pushing the objective of eliminating extreme poverty by 2030, even further behind. The global inflation and the rise in cost of living are undermining development gains, further worsening the challenges of the most vulnerable communities. Investment in human capital and skills development remain critical for developing countries. Climate change continues to cause devastating impacts across the globe. Africa and other climate vulnerable regions are enduring disproportionate adverse effects. The target of mobilizing $100 billion by 2030 to support mitigation and adaptation efforts of developing countries has not been achieved. The upcoming COP28 climate change conference to be held in the United Arab Emirates should thus be seized as an opportune moment to take bold actions. The threat of nuclear weapons is another source of grave concern for humanity. The international community needs to prioritize dialogue to de-escalate tensions and prevent the threat of nuclear weapons. We should also ensure that new technologies such as artificial intelligence are used responsibly in a manner that benefits humanity. The global community can address these challenges through meaningful cooperation. The letter and spirit of the United Nations Charter demands that we come together to tackle these challenges with the high sense of urgency and partnership. Ethiopia calls on it all member states to recommit the Charter of the United Nations. Maintaining the status quo will not advance our shared interest of ensuring peace and prosperity. We should collectively work for an inclusive multilateral system to renew our global solidarity. Mr. President, a new global collective security system that respects the sovereignty of member states and prevents 
conflict is vital. As a long-time champion and active participant in the United Mandated, in the UN mandated peacekeeping operations across the globe, Ethiopia underscores that reforming the UN Security Council is not a choice, but absolute necessity. We need a reformed and representative Security Council that is fit for purpose. Allocating permanent seats for Africa as contained in our continental common position is politically and morally justified. Ethiopia commands the effort of the UN Secretary General for the finan financing of the African Union peace support operations from assessed contributions. National ownership of security responsibilities is imperative. For peacekeeping operations to achieve their objectives, robust capacity building support should be provided to national law enforcement structures. Unilateral sanctions and coercive economic measures violate the UN principles and international law. Ethiopia opposes such measures imposed on developing countries and calls for their unconditional removal. We wish to underline that diplomatic dialogue among sovereign nations should be the primary tool to resolve difference. Ethiopia and other developing countries have also been advocating for the reform of the United Nations system as a whole. We call for a more inclusive and effective multilateral mechanism that works fairly for developing countries. The BRICS have championed this call. That is why Ethiopia is grateful to have been invited to join the group. Mr. President, while the world has the financial resources to fund all development targets of the 2030 agenda, its implementation has fallen behind. Therefore, what we need is firm political commitment and renewed global partnership. The Addis Ababa action agenda should also be fully implemented to meet the SDGs. Ethiopia has aligned its 10-year development plan with the SDGs. We are resolute in accelerating our inclusive political and economic reforms for a more peaceful and prosperous society. We are also committed to finding comprehensive solutions to the climate crisis. The Ethiopians owned flagship program, the National Green Legacy Initiative is a demonstration of this commitment. The objective of the program is to cultivate a green culture and ensure the country's development through rural and urban green initiatives. The program has been successful and we are making every effort to share our experience. Mr. President, the Pretoria Peace Agreement ended a two-year-long conflict in northern Ethiopia. This agreement is a practical embodiment of African solutions to African problems. The implementation of the agreement continues to make significant progress despite some delays in the, ex in the execution of the disarmament demobilization, and reintegration process. There is a need to expedite this process and ensure its successful completion. The continued implementation of the agreement is a clear manifestation of the government's commitment to resolving political differences through dialogue and constitutional means. We are also actively undertaking rehabilitation and reconstruction programs in areas affected by conflict. I would like to reaffirm that government is committed to consolidate peace and stability throughout the country. We continue to pursue dialogue for sustainable and peaceful solutions. To ensure accountability, reconciliation, truth telling and healing, Ethiopia is finalizing its transitional justice policy. Nationwide consultations on policy options for 
transitional justice have been effectively conducted in all regions across the country. Through the National Dialogue Commission, Ethiopia has also embarked on inclusive dialogue to address past and present societal concerns. We are confident that this would contribute to realizing a prosperous future for all citizens. Mr. President, conflict-induced crises in the Horn of Africa require a regional approach with, with the support of the international community. We express our solidarity with the brotherly nations of the Republic of Sudan, which is facing difficult times. We are confident that Sudan will find a way of to resolve the conflict peacefully and reestablish order. Ethiopia has been supporting the efforts for peace with full respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Sudan. It is important to make sure that all peace initiatives are coordinated. Ethiopia continues to honor its responsibility by promoting regional integration to advance peace, stability, economic cooperation, and people-to-people -people ties. We are working to materialize the development potential of our region. Ethiopia is determined to cooperate with its neighbors to expand trade, investment, and regional integration through infrastructure development, efficient logistics, and connectivity. Any bottleneck that would cons constrain shared prosperity of the region needs to be addressed in a concerted approach. Fostering closer partnership is critical to create access to seamless connectivity. Cultivating mutual trust and friendship is the right choice for regional cooperation and interdependence. Regional cooperation positively impacts the lives of people, especially when complemented by well-developed infrastructure projects. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is one such project that meets the legitimate development aspirations of Ethiopians and the region at large. Ethiopia welcomes the resumption of the trilateral talks with Egypt and Sudan. We remain committed to a negotiated win-win outcome facilitated by the African Union. Mr. President, Africa is a continent of hope with immense potential for prosperity. The continent has already been implementing its transformative and ambitious Agenda 2063. However, unleashing Africa's potential requires mobilizing domestic and external financial resources. The international financial architecture should be reformed with a special consideration for Africa's needs and priorities. A fast-tracked resolution of Africa's debt crisis and the provision of additional development finance should be top on our agenda. Ethiopia advocates for an inclusive international order that recognizes the contribution of all countries. The very survival of humanity, the safety of our planet, the peace and security of the world is at stake. Therefore, hope, justice, and equality for all should indeed define the fundamental agenda of this assembly. Beyond the rhetoric, this august body has a responsibility to promote global consensus and translate ideas proposed in this very hall into concrete actions. As I conclude, I would like to emphasize we are at a critical juncture where humanity must come together with a unity of purpose for peace and prosperity. With full awareness that our time to serve is limited, each of us gathered here today should reflect on the legacy we wish to leave behind for future generations. I thank you. I'm a I thank you. I thank you as a Deputy Prime Minister, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia.